So how's everybody been? You guys remember this? This is the A12 X25 we converted into an air raid siren and it works. It still works now. I mean, sounds just like, it sounds just like one, but did we really take it to the next level? I think not. So that's what we're going to try today, right after this. Thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video. Now, you know I love coffee. You've probably seen me make it or drink it on the channel before. And there's many ways to make coffee, but I myself really love buying whole bean coffee and grinding it myself at home. But I have found that buying whole bean coffee at the store, you're kind of limited on the selection you get. Now this is where Trade really came to my rescue because with Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters. And then Trade will match you with your own personal selection of coffees and deliver it right to your door. Step one is you take the test. This is a questionnaire that tells Trade exactly how you like your coffee and helps them curate matches just for you. Third is rate and repeat. Rate your matches so Trade can continue to delight you with new coffees that you'll love. And if you click the link in the description below, you'll get 30% off your first bag when you sign up. So thanks again, Trade. Back to the show. Some of the, the keen-eyed among you might have noticed I have a new toy. It's it's this variable output power supply. And as you can see right now, it's set to 12 volts and 0.14 amps, which is the specifications of the A12X25. This is the voltage and amperage this fan likes to run at. But that doesn't mean we have to. If we turn this back on, we're gonna notice something. Right now we're at 12 volts, but if I go to 13 volts, 14 volts, 15 volts, 16 volts, 17? It just gets louder and louder. I don't know how, how much can it handle? I'm not sure. That's the reason I got this. A lot of you guys wanted me to start doing some overvolting, uh, overclocking type stuff with electronics, and I was like, that sounds fun. So I picked one up. This can go up to 30 volts, uh, 0.5 amps, enough to just blow this fan right out of the water, which we'll do in a future video, so make sure to get subscribed. So I'm gonna take one of these fans and just gonna overclock it as much as I can till it fails. And then we're gonna cool a CPU with a, with a new one at that same voltage or just a step below and see if we get any more performance out of uh, pushing a little bit more RPM. But today, I think we should take this to the next level. Yeah, this is gonna be louder if we clock up the voltage, but it's never gonna be loud enough. Not loud enough for me, not loud enough for you. So what we're gonna do is bust out our old, miss, our old favorite, the RS2205 Red Bottom. This is a 2600 kV motor. And today, normally we hook this up to a 12 volt power supply but uh, this can take more voltage than that. This can actually run up to about 16.6 uh, .6 volts, which before we couldn't do because I didn't have any 4S batteries, but now we have a power supply that can do that. So that means more, more RPMs, more yeeting, more possibilities of exploding. It's gonna be fun. Let's show you how we're gonna do it. Now this is made with my FDM printer. This was one of the, one of the ones I received for review, did a good job, but uh, the problem with FDM is it's not the most accurate unless you have a really high-end machine. I guess I have a Prusa, but still, the accuracy level is just not there. But now I got something else. Something probably the, one of the most requested things on the channel. Uh, and something that we could probably take into the fan showdown. It's kind of up to you guys. Let me know if that's something you want to do. It's going to involve retesting some fans. But it might be something you want. It is a resin printer. This is the Elegu Mars. I've had it for about three weeks. And I've been running it literally constantly that entire time. And as somebody that's always looked at resin printing, like, ooh, that'd be really cool to get into, but never did because I was like, ah, oh, it's too messy or toxic chemicals, yada, yada, yada. I'm here to tell you, it's really not that bad. The machine itself is so simple. It's one ball screw and a set of tracks, and the, the build plate just comes into the tank, cures your resin, pops back up, and just rinses and repeats till it's done. And I was, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was gonna be way more work than it is. And you can see, that this little baby Groot is just perfect. Well, perfect for being the very first print that I made on the Elegoo Mars with the resin they sent. This is the, the clear or the translucent red from Elegoo Mars, and it just looks good. If you look at the detail on his face, his arms and hands, it's just something that can't be replicated on an FDM printer, and I was just amazed that I was able to make this kind of print, literally knowing nothing about resin printing but, you know, Chichu Box really isn't that bad to use. Um, it's a little finicky on my computer. I don't know why. It seems sometimes it wants to, like, go full screen and freak out. But other than that, slicing is pretty straightforward. There's a little bit, it's a little bit different 
putting support structures in, but the software itself does a good job of auto-generating it. So I was pretty surprised at how well that came out the first time around. And then I decided to buy some of the ABS-like blue resin from Elegant Mars and print a little baby Yoda. And I chose to print little baby Yoda because I've done him before FDM style. And I thought that looked good, but then after seeing um, the resin style, I didn't even know what good looked like, especially when you get to look at his hands around his coat. The detail just is so perfect. All in all, huge fan of resin printing and pretty astonished that it's actually quite simple in comparison to what I thought it was going to be. Now, if you do decide to get the Elegoo Mars, which I would recommend as it's the first printer that I've ever had this resin and it's done me nothing but good things, uh, pick up some feet film. So the first thing that I ran into, the first problem that I ran into is that um, as you print over and over again, your feet film eventually gets damaged, which was something I wasn't really aware of. And as it gets damaged, it starts to get cloudy. And then the prints want to stick to it more than they can hold on to your support structure and they fail. And then you get a cured resin spot in your tank and some sad little support structures hanging down. And I was like, what is going on? Why am I so bad at this all of a sudden? And then I realized how damaged my feet film was, replaced it, and everything was literally back to normal. Really easy to replace this stuff, and you can get it pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below to both the Elegoos, Elegoo Mars, and the feet film. I'll leave a link to basically everything that I now have, because I do now also have um, an ultrasonic cleaner. Before, I was just using IPA in a jug and giving it a little slosh around and then trying to cure it. And I, I did see where lots of people said that ultrasonic cleaners did a better job, so I wanted to try it, so I got a pretty nice decent one that's a good size for the Elgoo Mars and I would say it does do better now a lot of people will say you probably shouldn't use IPA in an ultrasonic cleaner maybe uh, it is flammable so there is that little bit of risk there um, explosion wise it's kind of like gasoline you pour gasoline in a cup and you light it or hit it with a match it's going to burn the vapors off yes uh, it's going to stay pretty stable like that until you spill it or aerate it or atomize it somehow, then you'll get a little bit of an explosion. But if you just leave it in the cup sitting still, it's just going to burn until you put a lid on it and smother it. Uh, same with IPA. The vapors are going to burn. If you light the vapors on fire, then you spill it, well, then you got a fire. But if you just put a lid on it, it'll normally smother it. I've seen some videos of people testing this. Um, if you're really afraid of using flammable liquids, which is not recommended in an uh, ultrasonic cleaner, you can use something like Mean Green, which is which is what I'm going to use next. So I have IPA in there now, and I have a fire extinguisher, all the, all the stuff you want to keep around it. But once that IPA gets saturated, I'm going to move to Mean Green and see what the quality is like, because if it's the same as IPA, I would much rather use something non-flammable than something flammable. Use your own discretion. Also, make sure to get gloves. You don't want to touch resin. Uh, bad, I think that's pretty well known at this point. Uh, and then other than that, you need a, a curing station. Elgoo does sell a curing station, which I'll link below. I was going to buy it, but unfortunately, it was not in stock when I was looking to buy it. So what I ended up doing was just 3D printing a box with my FDM printer and then fill, covering the inside of that box with uh, reflective tape. So I used some of that duct aluminum tape. You could use aluminum foil if you get to stick the inside. And then just put a 405 nanometer black light on top, and there you go, curing station. The only thing I would say about that is either use a timer with it or remember to take your prints out of it. Now, it's not really going to damage your prints unless the color of them matters to you, but what I found is that, uh, for instance, these two prints, one of them was cured at a, a more appropriate amount of time where the other one I kind of forgot about. So the one that's super green, uh, I put in it, I put in my curing station at night and then I fell asleep and then the next day I woke up, went to work and then came back from work and I was like, oh... I forgot I was curing that part and it's been in there for like 24 hours. And yeah, as you, if you do that, it gets quite green and it could get a little brittle, but it still works. I guess if I would have over cured Yoda here, he would have been more realistic, but let's talk about what we're actually going to print with it today to try to oust our little three printed fan over here. So this is what I have been working on. This is uh, a little tiny tornado siren, I guess you could call it. <laughs> It's pretty awesome. Hopefully it'll sound loud. I don't think a siren's meant to sound good, but let's take a look at the parts because it's easier to look at in the 3D modeling world than it is after they're all printed, especially when your printing skills are not the best.
So as you can see, here's all the little pieces and parts that make up this tornado siren. We got the horn, we got the turbine, we got the stator or the mount for the motor as well. We do have the motor itself, uh, a nut for to hold the turbine on, the mounting screws on the back here, and a stand just because why not. And what I really wanted to see when I was making this is how, how the precision was. So I left a really tight clearance between this shaft and the uh, stand to see how it fit. Uh, I only left a half a mil of clearance between the hub here and the turbine. On the back side, you see all these holes I put in here. That's just to hopefully keep this motor cool. Um, if we've learned anything from using these RS-2205s, uh, they get a little toasty when you're running pretty high. So let's put this thing together and see how she sounds. So everything is set up. Uh, the air raid or tornado siren actually looks pretty cool. You can see the voltage in the background. So we're starting at 12 volts, five amps. Uh, if we survive that, we'll go up uh, in voltage and see where it, where it takes us. I got my dB meter set up. So last time we did the A12X25, it was like 72-ish dB. Uh, we should be able to beat that with ease, but there it is. We'll see what the, the floor is. So let me be quiet real quick. Around 42 we'll call it. So let's kick it on, see what's happening. Uh, I got Yoda and Groot next, next to it without ear protection. Rip. I do have my controller so we can get out of the room and here we go. Wow. Hundred and five decibels. That's very loud. I'm in the other room and I can hear it. I guess we're gonna go tell failure though. Actually, before we go to failure, let's see how it's how the smoke test goes. Now, a smoke test really isn't necessary, but it is awesome. So that's why we're gonna try it. Let's keep it nice and slow so I don't blow my eardrums out. something up so we're going to top it out as high as it can as fast as it can go we're going to see if that turbine can hold on at 12 volts if it does we're going to up the voltage so let me get out of this room so i don't blow my ears out all right here we go watch the decimal meter it's about just under half throttle jesus christ that's about half. We're gonna just keep going up. Full throttle. 
Wow, that resin print held together pretty nicely. I can smell where it's starting to melt in there a little bit. Well, let's see if we can give her a little more juice. 16.6 volts. It's full throttle. It's not letting go. We're amping out the motor or the power supply. Oh my God, that's loud. Oh my gosh, that was, that was way louder than I thought it was gonna be. And I fully expected that rotor or that turbine to break. That's why I printed three more because I was for sure that that was gonna grenade. I even made a new mount. Well, that was actually the first mount I made. It kind of sucked, but I was gonna use that if that happened and I made a new horn because I was for sure that this resin print was just gonna just blow up and then take everything with it. But surprisingly, even at 16.6 .6 volts, it didn't. And we made, I mean, if you've seen the, you've seen the meter, 122 decibels, which is higher than a police siren and approaching jet engine and all that came from this little tiny power supply i bet we could have got louder if this had a higher amperage output so we only have five amps on this power supply i should have got a bigger one maybe i will uh let me let me know if i should but yeah that was five amps at 16.6 .6 volts and that's 122 decibels all from something that's 3d printed on the elegoo mars with a race quad motor so that just means that we just opened up a whole new window of possibilities for what we can make with this printer now that we have the precision of a resin printer and the strength because let's be honest uh fdm would not have survived that that uh that little test there but this resin one did even though i didn't think it was going to so what do you guys want what do you want to see next what do you want me to try to design and make with the uh elegoo mars that'll be just as hilarious and fun as this little tornado siren you have to let me know. If you like this video, make sure to like it, get subscribed, and as always, we'll see you. We'll see you in the next video where we're trying some other goofy, crazy stuff.